Everything is an expanse of perfection and benefit. Now here in India, it's a beautiful country with thousands of years of tradition into looking into this statement. Everything is a unified expanse. Now if you truly believe that, everything is a unified expanse, guess what that means? Everything is a unified <laughs> expanse. That means if anger, jealousy, pride, hate, love, joy, happiness, physical sickness, all of these things are evidence of the unified expanse. They do not need to change. If you're trying to change these things in order to experience the unified expanse, you see that doesn't make any sense. There is only one thing here. Now, I spent, I'm 44 now, I spent 25 years trying to find the unified expanse. And I tried to find it by not being depressed, not being angry, not experiencing sexual desire, not masturbating, <laughs> catastrophic failure, <laughs> um, being thin, being healthy, eating raw food, um, <coughs> taking drugs, partying, you know, so it was, it was just very, very confusing because I'm essentially trying to find oneness by rearranging the appearances and you can all see that that just doesn't make sense so it's very important what we need is the experience of the unified expanse talking about the unified expanse it just it drives me mad so if you go to Facebook I call it platitude book you will see nearly every other post will say something like everything is love with a picture of a dove on it <laughs> or you, you need to realize that there is nothing to realize Ooh. <laughs> okay now that's a, that's an example of symbolic communication if I was to, if we were to ask everyone what does everything is love mean they everyone would have a different opinion everyone it's totally divisive it, it splits us apart so these 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 things platitude the word platitude means something that's pretending to be profound my granny used to have these things hanging up in her lavatory <laughs> so really 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 from the heart do you want to spend your life in my granny's lavatory <laughs> really strong smell of lavender which I, re I really don't like I love you granny so like I said 25 years of, of, of essentially confusion I was looking for oneness I had no idea what it was if, you, if you're looking for something you need to know what it is don't you in this training you're introduced it, from the very first moment of the first open meeting to what you've been looking for. It might not seem very spectacular in the beginning. So like we heard, I'm going to introduce you to opening intelligence right now. That's the basis of your experience. That's your capacity to know. Now you might have called this something else and it's fine. You can call it whatever you like. Love, awareness, presence. It doesn't matter. But the important thing is, you can experience that right now. So let's do it all together. And like I said, it's not very exciting, but let's do it anyway. Just stop thinking, stop describing for a brief moment. What do you identify in your experience? Obviously, immediately, all of the thoughts, the sensations, they'll come back. So just stop thinking again. What do you identify? Now, there's something looking through your eyes, listening to me speak a presence, an openness, that you identify when you stop thinking. So this is what we call opening intelligence or open intelligence. And I really, really love the term open intelligence, opening intelligence. It's so descriptive and evocative for our very powerful true nature. It allows for everything equally. You've got no idea what the next thought's going to be. You've got no idea what the next sensation's going to be. You have no control. None. 
sorry to frighten you, but that's, that's obvious. You know that. You know that to be the case. You could just stop working right now, drop dead. End, end of story. <laughs> whenever, I, whenever I used to say that, I used to have a big panic attack. <laughs> oh my God, my heart's going to stop. Um, so the point is, is that, you know, like look at these beautiful flowers. They're really, really beautiful, okay? And some of, you, some of you out of the window, can you see those red roses and the pink roses? I would say they're even more beautiful than these ones. But the, you see, these flowers, they don't need to do any deep breathing or emotional therapy in order to become a rose. You know, they're not, they're not racked with remorse and the rose isn't out there going, oh, look at me, I'm a rose. I'm so cool and hip and I'm the best. It's just everything is happening, complete effortlessness, complete wonder, complete spontaneity. It's a celebration of creativity. Now, we as human beings, we have just conned ourselves into believing that we are not part of this perfection. That our thoughts and emotions somehow are not part of this perfection. That we must work on our emotions. We must control our emotions, our sensations. We, 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 we mustn't think certain thoughts. I mean, there are many, many other things that we need to have in place in our life and many things that we don't want to occur in our life. But this really is no different to these flowers trying to change themselves or improve themselves to become roses or, you know, get a bit bigger or a bit redder, a bit smellier. You know, so the evidence of what we're describing here, natural perfection, is everywhere. Screaming at us. You go down walking by the Ganga, the Ganga's just flowing on by, whether there's a dead body in it, a raft floating by, or whether it's just pristine blue water. Everything is as it is. And you could say that this training is, it provides you with explicit instructions and support to do nothing. Because everything is as it is. So we can try another experiment right now. Should we leave everything as it is? You ready? Three, two, one, go. It, just, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Everything is as it is. So essentially there are no techniques. Everything is an expanse of equalness. Everything is evidence of natural perfection. So you can't do anything with anything. Because everything is evidence of this perfection. In this training, just by that simple recognition, that short moment, so if you're new, the short moment can be, whenever you remember, just stop thinking, recognize what's at the basis of your experience, then it will disappear. So the short moments are repeated many times. It's not about recognizing open intelligence and then holding it in place, because that's impossible. Again, that denies this beautiful spontaneity of, uh, of us as human beings. My depression is a beautiful rose. My anger is a daffodil. <laughs> you know, and the beauty, of, the, be the beauty of this creativity is everything appears and resolves. So the rose, it, it, it flowers, it blooms, it's magnificent, then it decays. Any thought you have behaves in exactly the same way. You do not need to do anything about it. So, you know, the important thing is like, like we just heard and in the talk is, in the Balanced View training, there's one instruction, that short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become continuous. So that's my gift to you today. You can test that wherever you are. And it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter what the emotion is. You have the power to recognize open intelligence or not, regardless of what's going on in your life. When I, I realized that on about my third open meeting, I was like, this is amazing. I don't need to change anything about myself in order to be able to recognize this. That's, it was just like, I got that for free. Now, I, I, I relied on those short moments. I came to open meetings like you're doing here and an example of non-symbolic communication is the enlivening of the experience of open intelligence. So there are many people who come to the meetings who don't speak any English at all. So essentially I'm just going blah 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 and they still get the recognition of open intelligence.
How does that work? I don't care. It works. <laughs> and so the invitation is for you to test the support. So you've got short moments. So you can take that away right now. Um, India is beautiful country providing you with many opportunities to test this practice and what you'll start to see is something amazing things that really piss you off have the greatest power to be of benefit and empowerment really really amazing so white hot anger when it's left as it is is recognized to be as, as inseparable from perfect love it doesn't mean you become a doormat doesn't mean that you just sit there going, oh, thank you for punching me in the face. <laughs> or, you know, I can't think of any other examples, but the, in fact, the opposite is true. So if, if you're like me, uh, from, from, from the West, England, one of the most afflictive states is embarrassment. Almost worse than death. And I'm not exaggerating. I, was, I remember I was once in a restaurant with my parents and my family and the service was terrible, the food was terrible, it was very expensive and we were all sitting around going, oh my God, this is so disgusting, how, do we, how can they charge this money, I'm never coming here again, I don't, this, they can't call themselves a restaurant, look at them, they're just constant complaining, blaming, judging. When the waiter came over to the table, how, how, how is your meal? Every one of us went, oh, lovely, thank you, so nice, lovely, thank you, thank you. Like, like, just so, so absolutely controlled by the way we think we should behave. So when you start to rely on open intelligence, you free yourself up from all of these learned habits. It doesn't matter where you are from in the world, every single society programs its inhabitants in this way. It doesn't mean that any of this changes. It doesn't mean that your embarrassment disappears. But what it means is you recognize that the embarrassment is inseparable from the ground of your experience. Then you're able to say, actually, this food is absolute shit. I'm not paying you any money. How can you call yourself a restaurant? But you see the difference in that, in that response when it comes from the love of open intelligence, the recognition of the inseparability of embarrassment and anger from open intelligence. The energy, the non-symbolic communication, totally different than being operating from the pinhead of anger. And you all know the results of that. You know, blaming, judging, criticizing, <coughs> hatred. This is one way of responding, but I think humanity's had quite enough of that way of responding. You know, this is problem solving at its basis form, but this is all we've been using for the entirety of, well, modern history, the last 6,000 years. We call it constructive criticism. And it's, uh, it's very, very disempowering and... Uh, I'm on my best behaviour, so I'm not going to say those words that came into my head then. I'll just leave it at that. So here you're given the opportunity to test short moments now, one of the other uh, support, uh, support to the Balanced View training is coming to meetings like this and listening to talks, like real human beings just sharing about the experience of relying on the basis of their, their identity, open intelligence. Nothing fancy, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to wear elaborate costumes, you don't have to do any strange practices, you just get the pinnacle instruction on a plate given to you right from the beginning. And it's up to you to test it. Now the other support structures, for example, uh, the trainings, after the open meeting, anyone that wishes to can upload or download many, many talks to your MP3 player or your multimedia device. Just listening to these talks elicits the, in the instinctive recognition of your inherent perfection. And the only way you're going to t find out for yourself is if you test that. Now, if I was to say to you, if you listen to, say, two hours of these talks every day for a month, I'll give you a million euros or 10 lakh rupees. Everyone would be going, oh, my God, oh, my God, two hours, two hours, two hours. <laughs> but what's, what's, what's on offer here is way, 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 way more beneficial and supportive than a, and, than a sack full of paper. 
complete life satisfaction, complete flourishing, complete wonder, complete joy is inseparable from everything you experience. And it's right here, right now. And the only reason you haven't recognized that is because you've been focusing only on the descriptions, analyzing them, trying to work on them, trying to rearrange them. It's like focusing on the head of a pin or the palm of your hand. When I, before this training, I had about, and I shared this yesterday, five things that I focused on. I'm too fat, I'm depressed, I'm angry, I need more sex, I have panic attacks. <coughs> oh, and the big one, I'm really, really bored. So that's, that's six things. All day long, from the moment I woke up, just trying to rearrange these things, analyzing them, reading books about them, going to teachers telling me what I need to do to get rid of these things. Five things. When I started to rely on short moments, it was these five things that were my greatest trainers. Depression. I can choose to rely on open intelligence or not. Very simple. Anger. Open intelligence or not. Panic attacks. Now that took a long time, maybe three or four years, of relying on the other support structures because I could not rely on open intelligence with panic attacks in the beginning. So that's when I took advantage of the other supports. I wrote to my trainer. I hung out, hang, hung out with other community members. So you see, Balanced View is a grassroots movement. It's about the empowerment of you. Who is the most important person in the universe? Me. Myself. Exactly. You are the most... <laughs> Yeah, no, that is, you are the most important person in the universe. Without anything, without you, nothing could be known. Nothing. So it's very important that you familiarize yourself with your fundamental nature. You are the most important person here. So start getting real. And please, 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 from, from my heart, give yourself the opportunity to test what is being offered to you here for the next days. We're here for about three weeks. We're only here to support you in recognizing how wonderful and perfect you are and how wonderful and perfect your life is. Nothing needs to change. And for you to recognize that, you just need to just stop trying to change things and just test what's offered here and see what, hap see what happens. You know, three weeks isn't much to ask, is it? Do you want your a million euros or not? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my, my life has changed so, in so many tremendous ways without anything changing. See, there's another thing to go on my granny's lavatory wall. Everything changes, but nothing changes. Ooh. But you see, when that becomes your experience, so, for example, depression, when that's recognized as being inseparable from, from the ground of bliss, openness and benefit, open intelligence, it's, wow, depression, awesome. Anger, awesome. Hatred, awesome. So it's not about changing any of these things. And in the recognition of the inseparability of all of your life's data from the basis of experience, then, then, then you really, really start to shine and just your presence exhibits that perfection. And that alone, again, is evidence of more non-symbolic communication. You become exemplars of the basic state. The inseparability of open intelligence and all of your life's data, that's what you're looking for. And that's amazing. You can stop looking. Your life is what you're looking for. Granny's lavatory wall. <laughs> but you see, these platitudes, when they become your experience, then they become really, really special. Until then, it's just the chatterings of a chimpanzee with a nice picture attached to it. So give it a go, and we're here to support you all the way. How far do you want to take it? <laughs>